Mariah is on the witness stand and Michael continues questioning her, asking her by her silence that maybe she does know the sender of the email of the video footage. She says she doesn't, that she maintains it was anonymous. And he said, you know, didn't you tell anybody about it? And she said, no, it was not even your mother. She said, no, not Victoria Newman. And again, she responds, no. And he said, you didn't think it was odd that your friend is being surveilled and not to let her know this. And she said, she assumed Victoria had uh, security cameras that they're everywhere nowadays. And then he asks again about, he brings up a uh, dark horse and she says, nobody from dark horse would have brought, sent her that email. And he said, how would you know that? Unless you knew who the sender was. Sharon turns to Brittany and says, stop this. The judge says to Michael, you've been at this for a while. What do you hope to gain? And he basically just says he wants to make sure of what the witness has said, that that's the truth, and that she remembers everything the way it happened. Mariah says that she does, and she's not going to change her story. So Michael concludes his questioning, and he sits down. Brittany gets up to cross-examine and asks her, you lived with your mother on the Newman Ranch for some time. Mariah confirms that she did. And Brittany asked, did you see a lot of security cameras there? And she said, yes. And she said that then when it stands to reason that perhaps Victoria also has similar security at her house, which Mariah says, yes. And... Brittany asked her again, what did Sharon tell you they were doing in the bedroom? And Mariah explains that Sharon said they were doing a closet purge, looking for things to donate. And Brittany says, well, the footage of them taking the rug into the car, does not fit with that narrative? And Mariah admits that, yes, it does. And Brittany looks to the jury and says, it does to her too. The judge says to Christine that she can call her next witness, which is Phyllis Summers. She says Phyllis has been delayed, but she is now arriving and going through security. So the judge calls for a recess. They all rise and the judge leaves the courtroom. Nick talks to Michael and asks him, what was, what was he doing with Mariah? Why was he pressuring her that way? And Michael says he was hoping that the videotape wouldn't have to come out in the whole blackmail scheme, but he'll use it if he has to. And Nick realizes that he's setting the groundwork in case that has to happen. Nikki and Victoria are talking at the table, and Nikki is saying that she was almost hoping that Phyllis would have skipped town. And Victoria says, no such luck. It's up to Michael now. Sharon talks to Brittany and says, what's Michael doing? He wouldn't want the blackmail to come out, would he? Tessa and Mariah's life would be blown up and it wouldn't really look good for them either. And Brittany says she can't know what Michael's strategy is. It's every defense team for themselves. Tessa hugs Mariah during the recess and Mariah's worried about her testimony and that she thought, Christine knew she was lying, and she worries that she could be brought back up and cross-examined again. Tessa tells her it's okay, that for now everything is fine. Mariah worries that what if they subpoena the records, financial records and employee records of Dark Horse and sees that Tessa was on the payroll, and then they're both going down for Mariah for perjury and for Tessa for blackmail. And Tessa again tells her, to relax. For now, it looks like they're in the clear. Billy is standing with Jack and Carrie, and he's looking over at Victoria, and they smile at each other. He says to Carrie and Jack that Victoria doesn't deserve this after what JT did to her, and it's all Phyllis's fault, because how would they have known about this video otherwise? 
Carrie said, how do you know it was Phyllis who told them about the video? And Bella says, well, who else would, who else? How else would they have found out? And Jack says, well, we don't know that for sure. Let's wait and see. And Bailey is pretty certain that it's Phyllis that gave up the goods. Billy walks away and Christine re-enters the courtroom and Carrie and Jack are still standing there talking and Carrie wonders if Billy and Phyllis are going to be able to work together after this and Jack says I think Phyllis is going to find out that a lot of people are not going to be very happy with what she's done. Phyllis walks up to the courtroom door and before she can go in Nick comes out and he says hey and he just tells her that he's filling his dad in on what's happening since he's been barred from the courtroom. And Phyllis says to him, she promises she's going to do everything she can to end this. Nick just looks at her and walks away. Abby's sitting in the back of the courtroom and Jack sits down and asks what's on her mind. She doesn't respond and he thinks it's about Lola and that he got a text from Kyle saying that there are a lot of people getting tested to be potential donors for Lola and Abby says that the the piece that Mariah did will also help and it's getting a lot of attention but that Lola's not on her mind at the moment she's thinking about the video that Christine showed and is upset that it got that far between her and JT between Victoria and JT and that Victoria never talked to her about it. And that Victoria has prided herself on her strength and the fact that she's Victor Newman's daughter and that she kept it quiet, that he was abusing her. And she says, you know, she couldn't be for her, she couldn't be there for her then, but she's going to be there for her now. And that's why she's in the courtroom. Phyllis is sitting outside the courtroom on a bench and Summer comes in and asks how she's doing and what she's thinking. And Phyllis says she's just gathering her thoughts. Summer says, oh, you mean thinking about running away? And Phyllis says, oh, if you mean jumping on the first plane headed out of town to anywhere, thought never crossed her mind. But she's joking. She knows it would be catastrophic for all of them. And she just worries about the testimony even though she knows that the truth has to come out and that it's actually better for everybody if it does and it can help them in the long run summer agrees and says that they're gonna understand why she did this and that it can help them phyllis asks her how it was going in there and summer says she doesn't know she just got there herself she was at the hospital with kyle and phyllis asks how lola is if they found a donor yet Summer says, no, but a lot of people are getting tested, so fingers crossed. Phyllis says she's put it off long enough, and so she needs to go into the courtroom. As they stand up, Nick arrives, and Summer defends Phyllis, saying she's doing this for the right reasons. And Nick says, sure she is. More or less to save herself. Christine comes out of the room and says to Phyllis, there you are, it's time. Christine is questioning Phyllis on the witness stand and she brings it up to the night of JT's death. And when Victoria told them all that JT had been abusing her and how she felt about that. And Phyllis said that they were all shocked that this wasn't the JT they'd come to know at all. And Christine asked, what was Nikki's reaction to that? She said, was she upset, disturbed? And she goes, well, yes, any mother would be. And Michael asked for relevance on the matter. And Christine moves on and questions when they went up, what happened after she told the story. And that Victoria had to go upstairs because she wanted to be alone and collect her thoughts. And that they started hearing voices yelling and they ran up the stairs and Christine asked were you one of the first in the room she said no Nikki and Sharon were ahead of her but she saw everything that happened and she saw that he had 
Victoria pinned against her dresser and was yelling at her and pounding his fist on the dresser like she would be next. And Christine asked, what did he say to her exactly? And Phyllis says he was yelling, why'd you do this to me? How can you do this to me? And Christine says that, isn't it true that Victoria admitted earlier that Victoria had hit him in the past and Phyllis says she doesn't recall. And Christine reminds her that she's under oath, but she says, even if she did, JT was bigger and stronger. She wouldn't be a threat to him. And Christine asks, when did you find out that he had initially had hit her at an earlier date? She said later. As questioning goes on, Christine's making it seem like it was intentional and Phyllis yells out that it was an accident, it was self-defense and that they had no choice. The judge objects and Nick stands up and the courtroom erupts into chaos. Christine is continuing to question Phyllis about the night and ask her what did she do the moment she walked into the room and she saw what was happening. She said her and Sharon both froze at the doorway and Christine asked what did Nikki do? Did she freeze? And Phyllis says no. And she asked her what did she do and she said she picked up the fireplace poker, which was just to the right of the doorway, and went after JT. Christine wants her to demonstrate exactly what Nikki did. She hands her the fireplace poker and has a bailiff stand in for JT, and the bailiff initially stands facing Phyllis. Phyllis says that she came up on him from behind, and Christine is rather surprised by this and has the bailiff turn around and again asks Phyllis to show where Nikki hit him. Phyllis went over and with the fireplace poker puts it by the bailiff's head and Christine says so she snuck up on him and tells Phyllis she can sit down in the witness stand. Phyllis says I know the laws in the state that if an intruder breaks in, you don't have to warn them ahead of time that you are going to defend yourself, and you have that right. And Christine says, well, he was living there for some time, so he had a legal right to be in the house. Phyllis said they had broken up by that time, but because he still had things in the house, Christine says he still had the legal right to be there, and starts arguing the case against it, self-defense. And both Michael and Brittany object. Christine goes on to ask Phyllis about the parking arrangements where the visitors would park their cars and would it be seen by anyone coming up the road to the house and Phyllis confirms that that would be the case. So Christine says that JT coming to the house would have seen Nikki's car and trying to avoid a confrontation with his ex-mother-in-law might have snuck around the back way to avoid that. Phyllis cuts her off saying you're twisting this around, that he was hurting Victoria. He would have killed her if Phyllis, if Nikki didn't do what she had done. Christine says the point is that Nikki could have warned him, could have yelled at him to stop, but said nothing, and instead went to lethal force and killed him instead of trying to make him stop. And that it's not self-defense, that that's intentional, it's revenge and murder. Michael objects several times. And Christine says she is free with the witness. Michael is now cross-examining Phyllis and he says that you cut a deal or to, for immunity to be a witness for the prosecution or else you also would be on trial and she confirms that and he says that technically JT is missing because there's no body that's been found 
Christina Jackson says that he knows just as well as she does that forensic evidence said that there was a body buried in the park. And he said he has his own experts that can counteract that claim. And so then he talks to Phyllis saying that you have a long history with the Newmans. And Phyllis agrees that she has. And he says that a lot of that has been painful and not very pleasant. She says some, not all. Michael continues to question Phyllis about her relationship with Nikki and Victoria. And she says she's never had a problem with either one. And Michael says, what about Victor? And Phyllis admits that she does hate Victor. And Michael brings up what happened with Marco and how that hurt Phyllis. And she says it's a widely known fact that she does, she hates Victor. But that's never colored how she treats Nikki. And he says, what about your relationship with Billy? And she says, what about it? And he said, what about what? Would that color your relationship with Victoria? And she said, no. And he said, didn't you warn her off having a relationship with him? And she said it was friendly advice, not a threat. And he, could, he asked her, how long did it take her to go to the prosecution and become a witness for them? That he thinks it's being hypocritical that she's here saying that she wants to help the women yet she didn't call a lawyer when she was arrested and she struck a deal to save her own skin it's Brittany's turn to question phyllis and she takes her over her relationship with sharon and saying that well how would you characterize it and phyllis says they've never been friends and Brittany says that's kind of an understatement, don't you think? Considering when Sharon's daughter Cassie died, you had a sexual relationship with Nick, who she was Sharon was married to at the time. Phyllis says yes. And then she said later on, didn't Sharon return the favor and conceive faith with Nick when you were with Nick? And again, Phyllis says yes. And then she said, most recently, when Sharon and Nick were engaged, you had an affair with Nick again. And Phyllis says, it wasn't an affair, it was just one night. And Brittany says, well, Sharon broke up with him when she found out about the affair on the day of her wedding very publicly, and you ended up living with him. And Phyllis says, no. And Brittany says, oh, you broke up. And... Phyllis doesn't respond, and Brittany says, that's okay, I can call Nick up to the stand and ask him about the relevance, because Christine objected to the line of questioning, and Phyllis agrees that it is relevant, and so Brittany says, of course it's relevant, because she's basically trying to eliminate two romantic rivals with one false testimony. Christine objects. Brittany is finished with Phyllis and she's allowed to step down. The judge says that will be all for the witnesses for today and calls for a recess until the next day. Phyllis leaves the witness stand and leaves the courtroom with Summer following after her. Sharon, Vicki, and Victoria are all pretty grateful for their lawyers that they really did a number on Phyllis. And Victoria says, yes, let me send them fruit basket for prison. And Nikki says, bite your tongue. And that Phyllis didn't realize that she could be so easily manipulated by Christine. And Victoria still worries that even though they did a number on Phyllis that her testimony is still pretty damaging, including the physical evidence that she brought and presented to them. Sharon asked, did you know that Nick and Phyllis broke up? And neither Victoria or Nikki did, but they said it's not surprising that Nick is very family oriented and that they should never have trusted Phyllis. She was never an ally. 
Christmas and some are outside the courtroom and some are just amazed that Christine was basically doing this to Phyllis. Everybody comes out of the courtroom and Phyllis says she didn't realize that Christine was going to twist and manipulate her words the way she did and make it look like something that it wasn't. And everybody's basically saying you got played by three of the best and you can't really know, like you can't make us believe that you didn't know this was coming, that we're not going to give you any kind of sympathy. Summer says you don't need to listen to this and leads her mother away. Jack and Billy watch them walk away, and Jack says he to Billy that he really doesn't think that Phyllis did intend this, that she didn't think she'd be that easily manipulated. And Billy said, you know, once the media gets wind of this, it's not going to look good for Chabot. And Jack says, you're right, we need to get ahead of this. Mickey says to Carrie and Michael that they did a good job in neutralizing Phyllis and Brittany says she left herself wide open and Sharon says to Michael she has a question about how he dealt with Mariah and Michael says I have a question too why am I just learning the whole story behind this video just now I've continually asked you to tell me the truth about what happened and none of you will tell me and I keep saying to you that you're going to pay the price for these lies and deceptions. I can't defend you if I don't know actually what happened. Harry and Jack are outside of the courtroom and Jack is basically saying that this could be damaging to Jabot and that Phil's is going to have to step down immediately before any of the work that they have been doing to rebuild Jabo, including Carrie, really affects it. And Carrie says, you know, don't get ahead of yourself. You know, we're nowhere near a verdict yet. And Jack's like, I've seen the damage that this kind of scandal could do to a company. And don't put your face so much into Phyllis. She's not to be trusted. Just ask the women that are being walked back to their cell right now. Jack and Billy are talking, and Billy asks Nick, do you think there's any truth to what Brittany said, that Phyllis might have been doing this as jealousy over Sharon and Victoria? And Nick said, there's no really, no way of knowing if that's true or not, but she really, he kind of believes that, you know, she didn't think this would turn out the way it did. And Billy kind of more or less alludes to the fact that he's not so sure about that and walks away. Summer and Phyllis end up at Crimson Lights and Summer asks if uh, Phyllis wants her normal order that she really needs a caffeine fix and Phyllis says yes. And Phyllis asks Summer, do you think I did the right thing by testifying to hopefully get the women a reduced sentence? And Summer said, and not to save yourself. And Phyllis said she didn't know Christine would twist her words that way. And Summer said that she always will think that this was the right thing to do and she'll always be on her side. And Phyllis said, even if you're the only one. And Summer's going to go and put their order in when she gets a phone call from Nate. And Nate says to her that her test results are back and says that she's a potential liver donor for Lola and could she come down so that they confirm that with more testing. Summer seems shocked and tells him she's going to have to call him back and hangs up the phone. Phyllis asks who is that on the phone and Summer says oh nobody and Phyllis says I'm going to go put our order in and leaves Summer looking rather shell shocked. That's it for today. It was a good episode. This is your Friday episode in the U.S. and our day ahead. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a recap of a day ahead, Young and the Restless episode. Take care and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.